I have it pulled up in the multi-stream and the like next thing for you is your like coaching session from two years ago. <laughs> Sounds about right. Awesome. get stream link out to the ACL Oh, Kyler, how you been? Not too shabby. Hanging around, hanging in there. <laughs> um, I actually just, I had taken like a, let's say somewhere around two month break yeah. from League of Legends, which is like probably the longest break that I've had since I've started. Mm -hmm. uh, playing back in like end of 2016. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what brought me back was the real content that Riot Games has added <laughs> just now. <laughs> 2v2? So, the 2v2 game mode is so much fun. That along like with the Tournament of Souls, which is, I don't know if you've played any of it, but the fighting game that's just like in the client, it's oh, basically an advertisement it for like Project L. It is 
crazy. It's uh, it's really fun. The art style and everything is awesome. But yeah, the 2v2 game mode, even though I'm, I'm bronze right now, it is a fun, fun game mode to play. I mean, it came out yesterday, right? Or two days ago? Yeah. So bronze is acceptable, but... I have not played it yet, but I plan to play some this weekend, so... It is a lot of fun. That's what everybody has been telling me. The team was warming up on it before. Yeah. So you get a duo, and then you find some like broken stuff. Um, I was watching uh, Max's stream last night. I don't know if you caught it, but he found some bugs, and I found some bugs too. I was playing Gwen earlier, and her W just didn't work. I was getting hit by Ari charms outside of uh, Gwen W, which is not fun. But some of the bugs can be really fun. Oh yeah. Uh... It, it seems, I like always seeing like the Vandral things that come out, they're just like some funny... Yeah, anytime Riot adds anything <laughs> to the game, Vandral has a field day. Yep, he's very excited about it. Well, um, forewarning you, we are getting settled in the lobby here. I think everybody's in, so should have drafts uh, up soon, but... Uh, just expect a lot of pauses tonight. Um, one of the team members for uh, Reject Modernity uh, is going to be... He had eye surgery, I think, yesterday. And so he needs to put eye drops in every, like, five minutes or so. So oh, he's going to wow. pause uh, relatively frequently to put those in. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, which we're allowing. We're, be we're being nice. Uh, we're not gonna hold the rules over his head, but uh, we we are gonna make sure that there's no like team fighting or anything on that that front. So hoping I don't uh, know it doesn't end up having any issues that way. Is the dub worth uh, permanent eye damage? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. <laughs> Could be. It's an important Could match be. for them. They there will be <laughs> it. They'll be the one seed if they win. And. Um, we, we do not change from this. We can drop them to the two seed, which could help us out because the one seed in this group is Mirage Alliance, uh, or would be in that case. And so, you know, trying to put off playing against four, four former LCS players or Academy players, uh, always nice to put that match off until later. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, but yeah, so coming into this, we have Return of the Middle Sticks. Uh, it looks like they're taking up Red Side here, and Reject Modernity is... Is that how you pronounce it? Modernity? Modernity is how I would do it, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, they're taking up the blue side. Um, Return of the Middle Sticks sitting at 4-2, and two, uh, and Reject Modernity is 6-0, and oh, the undefeated team uh, coming into this uh, playoff berth, but um, we'll see if Return of the Middle Sticks has what it takes to take uh, at least one series off of Project Modernity uh, for this regular season um, section of the tournament. So, yep. Um, Notably, I think we they are the only six and zero team in in ACL. Uh, they have not played Mirage. They they are the one team that hasn't faced Mirage in their group because they played Team Ambition week one, and that team ended up dropping out after week one, and uh, Mirage replaced them. So. I think uh, this will be a good test, I think, uh, to see like how strong these guys are. I mean, it's still an accomplishment to go 6-0, and don't get me wrong. But uh, I think based on preseason ranks, um, we were at the top of the table. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how these guys match up. I'm, ex I'm excited uh, to see a really good matchup tonight. Right, well... Throughout the uh, group stage, uh, Return of the Middle Sticks went undefeated, and then this cross plays when we've gone into, <clears throat> you know, Alarum Dardock, uh, a couple of the uh, bigger names on the on the league scene. Um, but yeah, we'll see uh, how this matchup goes. I'm looking to see what spiciness brings out in draft. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Nefiri would be would be outlawed from this uh, from this uh, series. Correct. Yeah, uh, it's actually okay. disabled for all of ACL playoffs and all of NACL, which uh, will be on uh, the Rally Cloud channel tomorrow for us. So Nice. Well, that's probably a good thing because I've played a game against Nefiri earlier, and in my Platinum game, she kind of crushed us. So. <laughs> or maybe uh, that's Marty, the two months of rust. I don't know. <laughs> it might just be. It might just be. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, come back into it. Uh, a lot of the meta has actually shifted, um, so a lot of new items were introduced, uh, and a lot of uh, uh, meta has shifted between a whole bunch of different lanes. So like bottom lane right now, I'm seeing a lot of Kaisa. That seems to be the prio pick for everything. Zaya as well uh, is still up there. Um, yep. Have you noticed anything different about, you know, mid lane, top lane, jungle that we should be looking out for? Yeah, I mean, I feel like on this patch, um, there's a lot of things that are pretty standard. I think for a lot of people, it's kind of solved-ish. Uh, there seems to be Kai'Sa as the highest priority, uh, but notably, uh, there's been a couple buffs. Aatrox is one to keep an eye out for. Um, I know I'm seeing him return a lot. Uh, getting a lot more play just because he got some pretty big buffs in this last patch so might see an appearance here um rumble also an interesting top laner uh really depends on if the top laner can play it um yes yeah, yeah that's one of those <laughs> picks that you can it, that's one of those picks that you could pick up and just uh not know what you're doing with your fingers and then just end up sending an r in the in an arid direction so uh, definitely something that you need to put in at least a couple games on. Um, so, uh, looking forward to that. Looking at these two teams here, again, for the return of Metal Sticks, the lineup is uh, Cookie Crook, uh, Dragowski, Max, Puppe, and Boy Wonder. And then lining up on the other side uh, is Beerus, Dinner, Spooky, Perk Lazarus, and Bandy. Um, I've been checking out some of these OP.GG's and uh, Spooky seems to be on a little bit of a Talia tear. That guy uh, is really liking the Talia, so we might look for that. Uh, again, in some of these in some of these drafts, uh, Comfort is always a go-to to take off the table just because uh, they've had thousands of games on those champions. So if you yep. can push them on something a little bit more uncomfortable, that could open up some opportunities for you. Definitely makes sense. Uh... Talia might be a contested pick tonight. I know Max also really loves the pick. Um, so that might be where we're at. We are into draft here. Yep, Reject Modernity taking that Lilia off the table. Uh, that has been uh, something that Drakowski seems to be going back to in solo queue. So uh, another one of those comfort picks to take off, uh, as well as that Kaisa that we were talking about before, um, just getting booted out right off the table by Return of the Middle Sticks. Yeah, notably, uh, Kai's had taken off here. I'm a little surprised by that because most teams seem to think it's not that big of a deal to give over. Um, it does go over a lot. It's kind of short range AD carry, so it can be punished. Um, there are ways to punish it for sure, but is one of the stronger ADCs on the patch by and large. Uh, Tristana getting banned away. Premier flex pick, really, really strong in the mid lane. Um, especially with picks like Ziggs coming out. Uh, you've got AP that you can shift to other lanes. So having Tristana mid, um, RMD does not want RTM to get that at all. Yeah, no, that Tristana has been prevalent in most uh, areas that we've seen, especially in pro play. You know, uh, JoJo played it today, I believe, and was popping off on it and stuff like that. So. Definitely a good thing to take off the table. The Rangar uh, is the response by Return of the Middle Sticks. And then the A Soul Hover, and that might come out here as last minute. They switched to the Annie. Uh, Annie is just another one of those prio picks in mid lane that you can just, you could also uh, roll swap it to support. You know, it just gets pushed, and then it's just a pain to deal with. She finds those flanks, and then those team fights become a hell of a lot harder. Yeah, it, it's kind of interesting. I think I think she's fallen off a little bit in priority in favor of like LeBlanc, uh, Tristana, those types of champions. Um, but I don't think it's because she got any weaker. I think it's just because other things got stronger. Uh, so with that band coming out, I'm expecting LeBlanc to be picked up first pick here. Um, we'll see if that's what Reject decides to go for. Oh, Maokai, another pr premier pick. And that is something that RTM has spent a lot of games on. So Maokai going to go over. That is going to leave up Rel and LeBlanc here, which I expect RTM to pick up with the two picks here. I think that's the two best left on the table. Yep, and that Maokai could technically be a flex pick. You know, we shouldn't go top a couple times, but jungle is kind of the expected role for that. Uh, the Rel changes are super interesting. She gains a lot more utility, uh, especially for your AD carry. Uh, to get those engages off, uh, and I really like the changes that they made to her. They made her, you know, really strong. 
Um, and that's kind of what she needed because she was, you know, you, you think of the one champion that you forgot of, right? When you're <laughs> thinking of all the 160 plus champions in the game, Rel usually is the one that nobody could name. So uh, her coming back into the spotlight is awesome. Um, I'm really liking that meta shift there. Uh, yeah. And like you said, we might be looking to pair that with something like LeBlanc. That static shift build is something that's been coming out recently. So uh, we'll see what we pair with the Rel. Yeah, taking some time to think about it, Aphelios is going to be the hover and lock here for ROTM. So LeBlanc's still on the table. Maybe this is some scouting, thinking, oh, maybe the uh, they don't play LeBlanc or something like that on the P.GG. Heimerdinger going to be hovered here. Don't know if that's going to be true or not, but back to what you're talking about with the Rel. I really like uh, the fact that she has a stun on her Q now. I think it makes a lot of her counter matchups playable. Um, speaking of which, we're going to see the Alistar uh, locked in for reject. Um, and that is one of the counter matchups because you can knock Rel out of her W. Um, she still has some utility at least, so she's not completely dead on the water with that stun on her Q, but... Uh, definitely a harder matchup to play into, but playable now compared to the old days. Yeah, and with that Alistar, I could see something like the Zaya coming out. That's a priority pick. Uh, yeah, and then they hover and lock it in. So that Zaya also kind of uh, negates the Rel a little bit because, you know, Zaya sends out the feathers, Rel goes in, Zaya pulls back the feathers, Rel's dead. Yep. So that's kind of the the opportunity that the Zaya is going to be looking for is that counter engage. Um, and then we'll see what Return of the Middle Sticks answers with here. I would assume that it's going to be a jungler, and we're going to save solo lane picks for the second half of the uh, pick phase. Um, and a Poppy is going to be locked in for Return of the Middle Sticks. Now, is that going jungle or top? We don't know. Uh, both of them play it. Both of them played it a lot, actually. So uh, it is a flex. It is uh, something that Crook is uh, very practiced on. So... Um, could end up going anywhere. Nice to kind of get that in now. Uh, I don't think that changes your top bans too much. You probably still try to ban out top laners here. Um, but Reject also has the flex pick in the jungle top with Maokai still. So if it goes Maokai, Poppy, top lane, we could see that matchup um, pretty similar in the jungle here. So Viego getting off the table for Reject and Cassiopeia for Return of the Middle Sticks. Yeah, and with that Poppy pickup, uh, it kind of defers Reject Modernity from going uh, some of those uh, dash assassins that get on the Aphelios um, uh, that could go in the mid lane. Uh, so you see Return of the Middle Sticks taking away those those carry potential mid laners that don't have dashes, such as the Cassiopeia and the Victor. I really like that, um, that mentality going into that second uh, band phase, having that plan there. Um, and then the A Soul hover. Uh, that's been a really strong champion. I mean, ever since his rework, he's just been um, a big, a big threat. But the LeBlanc, uh, like you were talking about earlier, is what's eventually taken off by Reject Modernity. Yep. Uh, not surprised to see that come through here as the ban. Um, I think Max has a kind of low win rate on his solo queue account with it. So maybe you weren't too worried about it through the first phase. But uh, the Nico going to be... The blind pick here for Return of the Middle Six. So it is. Yeah, and that's locked in. Yeah, so Nico has a lot of damage in her kit now, uh, as well as those mind controls. Uh, you know, with her with her new uh, camouflage, she can hide as minions, walk into lane, do a really easy lane gank. Um, and then Syndra is the answer for Reject Modernity. We actually saw this today in the LCS. Uh, Nico seemed to be the one that was coming out on top in that matchup, so we can see how that plays out. Uh, here today in this match, as Reject Modernity is figuring out what they want to have to round out their comp, whether it's a jungler or a top laner, it is the top lane Aatrox, which means that Return of the Middle Six gets to counterpick that top lane. Yeah, I expect that Poppy is now going to probably go to the jungle. It's playable into Aatrox, but it's really hard to play tanks into this champ. Um, my guess is that we might see a Fiora um, go for the carry versus carry from Crook. Um, but there's a lot of options here. You could play Jax, you could play Olaf. Um, could see that as well. Fiora going to be the hover here. Is Please a big lock Aatrox it in. Counter. Please, 
please lock it in. And it yes, is. the Fiora gets locked in. Uh, that's an awesome uh, counter. You know, you can predict. He's very, very predictable on when his CC is going to happen. So you get like a guaranteed stun on the repost. Um, there's some things that Aatrox can do uh, to switch around, such as queuing and then eating out of the repost range. But um, yeah, it's 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 a very Fiora favored matchup. So I'm excited to see that carry versus carry matchup in the top lane. Yeah. It is kind of interesting. I think it diverges a little bit from the rest of RTM's comp. Um, they want to go in. They want to team fight. It looks like, but um, Fiora going to be on the side lane split pushing. Really needs to get that late over uh, lead over the Aatrox to realize some of her pressure. Um, and if RTM can, you know, send Poppy towards the top side and help this Fiora out with an early kill, with an early tower dive, something like that. Um, that is what they're going to be looking for, for sure. Yeah, as 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 seems to be the case uh, with a lot of these uh, games that I've been casting, it seems that the top lane is going to be the focus. Uh, so we're going to see what pathing the junglers take as we hop into second draft here. Uh, you thought first breakfast was enough. Well, no, what about second breakfast? What about second <laughs> draft? Um, so we'll have a little bit of time to talk about this. I don't like um, this I'm... meal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this, is a, this is a long five minute meal. Yep. Um, for this bot lane, I really think that uh, Reject Modernity positioned well in that draft from that uh, Relifilios 1-2 from Return of the Middle Sticks. Answering that with that Alistar Zaya, I think that's a really good answer to that lane. It kind of negates what Rel and Aphilios are looking to do, which is kind of fight around that level 6 area. Um, and so when we're talking about that dive in, go in uh, pressure that Return of the Middle Sticks is kind of drafting around, uh, that Zaya just really, you know, takes away from it. But you know, we've seen we've seen comps like that, such as like Ari Vi go into a Zaya and still be able to come out on top just because they have so much burst in CC. So we'll see if that's able to apply here with this Poppy Rel uh, and Nico uh, kind of core of CC that Return of the Middle Sticks drafted. Yeah, um, Zaya is going to get a lot of value out of that Feather Storm, uh, being able to evade, like you said. Um, I think the biggest thing here is. Uh, Kirk's ability to, to get an advantage in the side lane, and even if he doesn't, how he operates team fights. I think that's the thing that separates good Fioras from bad Fioras, is how well they can play in a team fight. Um, it's easy to win the side lane 1v1, but uh, you're going to be called on at some point in this game with the way the team comps are to f team fight. If you can find that uh, one fight, that one target that you want to kill off with the Fiora ultimate, that could be the game changer for our team. Yeah, as always with a Fiora and a split pusher like that, you're trying to get pressure on the side, draw some people over, and then maybe look to team fight with a numbers advantage if you have teleport up uh, and they had maybe used it earlier. Uh, that's always something to look at. Um, it kind of becomes, later on, it kind of becomes a mind game about what the lane assignments are, where you want to go, how you want to push, uh, and the timing on objectives. Um, so it, can, it, it becomes pretty complicated. Um, after the laning phase, uh, as a split pusher, what you want to do, that's why a lot of the times in professional play, uh, especially in, uh, let's just say a region like NA, you see a lot of people <laughs> going towards uh, the team fight, such as like the Orn, uh, you know, stuff like that, that can really just group up as five um, yeah. and get it's the, the NA ram execute, going. You know? uh, yeah. And I think that's why we see it at all levels of play. Uh, if you're always, if you're struggling to find something to play, you, you lock the hard CC, you lock the burst <laughs> combos, and you just fight around the objectives. It makes it really easy. But uh, the best teams are able to play multiple styles, and we'll have to see how ROTM does with the split push of the Fiora in this one. I think that will be the difference maker. Yeah, that's why you see Orn on my match history, you know? It's the, <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the tried and true go-to. Yep. Uh, Yep, and we haven't talked much about this mid matchup, the Nico versus the Syndra. Uh, like I said, I kind of saw it earlier today, but um, other than that little snippet of the LCS, I haven't seen this matchup too much. Yep. Um, do you have any idea how you think that this one's going to go? Who's going to get the shove? Who's going to get that uh, mid pressure for the jungler? Yeah, uh, I expect uh, Nico to be able to win this out. She has a little bit more range than Syndra. It's not quite as punishing as a lot of other lanes that Nico plays into. Um, but Syndra is going to be there to farm up, uh, be there to stun when the jungler comes. And that's about what you can do in this lane. 
Uh, Nico should have more of the priority. It just has more damage on the minions to be able to shove in and roam with the jungle. So um, we'll have to see how that pressure is utilized by Max on the Nico. And I think the biggest thing for for uh, the new Nico is how well you can use the camouflage. Sitting in a bush as a ward, uh, unexpected, getting a, a nice flank on somebody is is kind of how you want to utilize this champion. Champion. And uh, we saw last week in NACL, it was used really effectively against ROTM um, by Mirage Alliance. And so we'll have to see if Max learned anything from that and uh, can apply it here. Yeah, uh, and then another change that uh, Syndra had gotten a while back was that she became more of a scaling pick with her splinters. Uh, so looking to get those, to get those upgrades to those abilities, um, that kind of became a focal point of her uh, kit. So she's looking to do those fast combos, get those multiple spells in a row so that she can grab the splinters, you know, start scaling up. Uh, and that kind of makes her weak early. So like you said, that Nico should have push uh, and should be able to uh, get that lane prio. And when you get priority through mid, that can transfer into those ganks like you were talking about, into like either the bot lane or the top lane with as volatile as the top lane is uh, in this matchup. Um, and just flanking with, like you said, sitting in a bush uh, as a ward or walking into a uh, lane as a minion uh, could be what swings the difference in these side lanes. Yeah, there's some really interesting timings you can do with it too. Um, I've seen some people disguise themselves as a minion, run a bot early, uh, and then meet up with something like an engaged champion in the rel that RTM has. You can time that before they even have time to count the minions fully, and before you realize it, there's an extra person in that lane that you weren't expecting, one that you can't ward for, um, and that can make it really punishing. So. Uh, a lot of really unique situations you can get yourself into with, with Nico. Yeah, it tests your counting skills, that's for sure. <laughs> you see you see seven Every on wave. a non-cannon wave, that's that's the big red flags. That's the exclamation point above the head should be sounding. Yep, that's for sure. Um, almost through the second draft here, 15 seconds to go till we are on the rift. Yeah, and again, like you said, um, those pauses might come through uh, depending on the game state. Uh, so we we'll have to expect uh, quite a few of those, but hopefully it gets back in uh, pretty pretty simple. Sometimes the client does not like pauses in spectator mode. So um, we'll see how that plays out <laughs> here. But we will, we will be getting a secondary pause after it's unpaused. Uh, that's <laughs> usually how it ends up working, so. All right, sweet, and we are on to Summoner's Rift uh, as both teams uh, load in, and there's one of those pauses that we were talking about. <clears throat> but yep, starting it off strong there. Yeah, again, Beerus, Dinner, Spooky, uh, Kirk, Lazarus, and Vandy on the, I think I was actually disconnected real quick for some reason. No worries, we're Reminded still in the pause this. timing. So. Oh, they, there we go, okay. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, like I was saying, Beerus, Dinner, Spooky, Kid Lazarus, and Bandy um, are coming in on the blue side for Reject Modernity. And on the red side for ROTM, it's Cookie Crook, Dragowski, Max 108, Puppe, and Boy Wonder. Uh, we'll see if there's any shenanigans going on level one, because it looks like to be a five point split for both teams. Draft music went all along, but. Gotta live, give Maris a lot of props. Uh, not the easiest job to do the producing while casting at the same time. So. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't believe so. Um, <laughs> when I was streaming a little bit. I would always forget to change the scene. And then I'd be like halfway through lane phase. I'd check chat and it'd be like, change the scene. I'd be like, okay, fine. You guys want to see this gameplay? Uh, but that's, I mean, it's tough on the eyes, so you might need some extra eye drops for that. But. <laughs> no uh, level one shenanigans here from either team. Um, just kind of waiting out, trying to see where people decide to start. Looks like both junglers are going to start leashless here. Yeah, and uh, 
none of them were spotted out, it looks like. So it's going to be kind of a guessing game as to where each one of these goes. So as always with junglers, it's around that three minute mark, uh, three minute, 30 second mark that you need to watch out for um, those ganks uh, in the side lanes. Ooh, Max hitting a good trade early, hitting the pop blossom. Yeah, and like you were saying, that uh, Nico matchup seems to be just, you know, the damage is just in Nico's favor um, there in the early trades and that push. So uh, expecting to see a little bit of fighting uh, and skirmishing up here in the top side as well, especially as a couple of those levels and abilities come through. Yeah, both ADCs going a little greedy here, uh, both going coal, which means no one really has an advantage. So um, going to be coming out even on the gold side there, but the combat uh, advantage is going to be the same. Um, so far, Pepe and Boy Wonder hitting that level two first, and the CS should be evened up relatively early. Crook with a trade under tower here. It looks like Poppy yeah, is headed towards this top side. I wonder if they're going to try to dive with the stack wave. Yeah, that could be the case uh, as Drakowski is heading up there. That wave is huge. It will get under turret. There's no way that Beerus can hold this. Now it's just how they juggle aggro the flash in from Dukowski, and Beerus has nowhere to go but backwards, and he misses the knockup. The first blood comes through from Crookie Cook, but the flash forward from Dinner, and the flash away from Crookie Cook, but he's still alive. I don't know if Beerus has the damage for this. The Gromp might help him out here as the TP comes in from Beerus. And it looks like Crooky Crook got away with murder there as he's able to get away. That's crazy. Yeah, makes out like a crook there. Uh, gets the steal <laughs> on the kill. Uh, and it's going to be up 1-0. That's exactly what you want for RTM. Great pathing there from Drakowski. Just doing his topside into that gank. Knowing Malachi probably started topside and was going to path down. Um, yeah, and that's exactly what you needed to swing that top matchup. That's a big wave. Uh, that Beerus wasn't able to CS all of, uh, as well as just lose some XP as he was teleporting back up there. So, um, and that means that Crooked Cook gets to save his TP as the wave pushes back out towards him. Uh, that's that's an amazing dive. Yep, definitely what you want to see. Uh, it's going to have quite a CS lead after he gets this wave as well. Um, does blow Atrox Flash, so could could see a repeat gank coming here from. Drakowski early, the bullying continuing on to Spooky. <laughs> yeah, Max is playing super, super aggressive. Uh, and I think that he knows he can. He just has a big wave. He's got health to play with. Uh, and that makes a 2v1 really uh, plausible. But Boy Wonder goes in on Kid Lazarus in the bot lane. The knockup lands, and Poppy's making his way down there too. But a solo kill for Max in the mid lane. There it is. As Drakowski looking now. Boy Wonder flashing forward, misses it as Kid Lazarus flashes away. Drakowski gets the knockback, but nothing more seems to be able to come from it. Yeah, this wave is also pushing towards ROTM side. So flashless uh, Zaya down here. Going to be pretty scary, especially since Poppy is in the area. Could just make a quick repeat, but doesn't look like it's going to happen yet. Max stepping up Mid here. might be the next target. The stun comes through as Spooky's push back the flash away. Drakowski has the move speed, but no more damage or CC. Got a little Pause stutter there. Yep. Yeah, a little <laughs> stutter for me as well. As the fighting continues in the bot side, you know, I really liked how Boy Wonder's been using these bushes uh, to kind of just threaten that engage uh, from the rel because it's so powerful. Yep. Really stepping forward without uh, much concern. I like how Boy Wonder has been positioning himself in the early game, use, utilizing the bushes to um, really be scary on those engaged champs. It's how you want to play that lane. Right, there's only so many wards in the game as Bandy spotted out on that sweeper. Max might be looking. He has level 6 advantage. Stun does not land from Boy Wonder. But now, Dinner making his way into the bot lane. A little lane gank could be coming through. I remember like Boy Wonder play. just used a sweeper. Yeah, very smart play here from Dinner. I don't know if he does it look like RTM. Saw I think him they there? suss it out though. Boy Wonder was very hesitant as that knockup lands onto Dinner. Puppe might be able to trade back some damage, but no kill for sure. As now the wave is they're gonna actually gonna push the wave in. That's actually I feel like a mistake from Reject Modernity. Yeah, puts I feel like they could have punished a lot harder there. For sure. I think also Dinner could have waited for that gank. 
I mean, he w followed up on Bandy's engage, but they could have played that, I think, a little bit more patient. There's no camps up for the Maokai, so it's not like he's missing out on anything. The wave was pushing towards that tower. I think it could have been a better spot for them to wait it out until they were further, uh, RTM was further from their tower. Um, but in the end there, an unsuccessful gank. RTM gonna come put out some wards on the dragon. On the dragon here, yep. yeah, dragon's up, uh, an early mountain soul. Um, it's not the best early Drake in the world, but uh, you know, you'd want to start that soul stacking early. Um, and they may they may have spot dinner out on that ward in the top side as he's looking for an invade, but that dragon should go down to uh, Return of the Middle Sticks uncontested. Crooky Crook, level six, along with Beerus, trading back and forth. Beerus he's not able to no find items. anything. Pops the R, but Crooky Crook is looking. Not able to find anything as Beerus goes over the wall, and the R for R trade is... That's all it amounts to. Yeah. Beerus has no items there, just has his door and shield from the early game. So, uh, going to be waiting on this base, but I think Crook can just hold the wave. Uh, and this ends up being really good for him. I like that Dinner was trying to make a proactive play, uh, knowing RTM was on the Drake there, but uh, Beerus just stepping up a little bit too far and Crook punishing. Yeah, noticeably with that exchange there, uh, Dinner had to go away from his invade, so he didn't get any of the topside camps uh, that Dragowski is going to go towards now. Um, so a really net negative play from uh, from Reject Modernity there in the top side. As Boy Wonder is going forward. The stun lands onto Kid Lazarus, but that's all that's all that's there. Yep, we haven't seen a ton of action in this bot lane. Um, it's been just kind of slow as standard. Post comes out. Cookie Crook is looking for more as he just has that item advantage. Yeesh. The it's so much damage on those vital procs. It's insane. Yeah, it makes it so hard to step up for this Aatrox, and that's kind of the punish you get for blinding it there. Um, Ping's coming down around this Rift Herald. Um, that is the prize in the early game. Definitely the best objective to get, especially if you can use it to get a full tower or even some plates. Yeah, uh, and it gives so much gold as is. Yep. Um, as Drakowski, he just kind of shuffles him off by himself. Yep. Uh, Aatrox was super chunked there, and Dinner did not want to stick around with that Fiora and Poppy uh, bearing down. So, not much they're going to tr try to do. I don't mind that they tried to sneak it there, but uh, good on them to step away from a dangerous situation. Drakowski finds Dinner here for a little trade in the jungle. As a trade happens again in the bot lane, Bandy might be in danger. No six yet as the ultimate comes out from Puppe. He's able to get a little bit more damage. Uh, but that's that's all that they can get in the bot lane. Bandy on the Alistar is surprisingly, uh, or maybe I should say unsurprisingly, really squishy without his ultimate. Yep. He's still at level five. Notably, Boy Wonder does have flash here, so I wonder if they're going to try it for something. Oh, and a flash a forward, here. but he gets kind of knocked away. That was... An interesting interaction, but the stun did not land. Now the Pop Blossom comes out. Up and down he goes, as that's going to be all she wrote for Beerus, but he stays alive for a really long time. The flash away saves him. And now Crooky Crook might be in a little bit of trouble as well. Drakowski, seeing if he can't get any more or get away. As get dinner goes forward, Beerus is able to get a couple of knockups, and it goes over to Spooky in the end. That was just an overextension by ROTM. Yeah, honestly, it was just a good fight there from RMD. Uh... Max didn't quite find the ult that he needed to on the Nico, only hitting one target. And they were able to immediately burst off that CC. Uh, the Aatrox was able to heal up so much there in that fight. Stay alive, and uh, that's all she wrote for that fight. So Spooky going to be the main beneficiary there after a rough early start. Um, it's going to pick up two kills and even this back up. Yeah, if we take a little check-in here, uh, no major objectives on the map, but uh, gold-wise, you know, that's a huge lead in the top lane, 8,000 gold lead in the top lane uh, for Crooky Crook. Um, and then other than that, barely even across the board, you know, some 3K, 5K gold leads there, but man, 8K gold lead it. Or 800, 800, sorry, not 8K. Yeah. <laughs> <I would laughs> that would say, be a little bit insane. We'd be in a different spot Eight, here. Yeah. <laughs> 800 gold lead is is uh, a big chunk this early into the game. Yeah, so. Drakowski is going to have to drop this Herald soon here. Uh, it is expiring 
in the next couple seconds. He's just gonna have to drop it, or it's just gonna perish. Yeah, he might make his way towards mid. Um, oh, never mind. That four? was a cooldown of him, like. Oh, okay. I thought that something. was the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Little spectator bug, but um, it is gonna be that timer is gonna be up soon here because they did get it about three minutes ago. So maybe they'll look to use it for dragon pressure. Boy Wonder gonna be found out by Diner here. As he crash downs over the wall, nothing there. As like you said, dragon coming up very soon. Everybody's posturing around there. No TPs for Crooky Crook, as dinner might be cut out here. Puppe roots him, and then the stun against the wall happens, oh. and he is <laughs> waste flash on an auto attack. <laughs> uh, and that's the jungler down when Dragon's coming up. Yeah, and th I think that's gonna mean the full tower down here as well. I don't think Zaya can even step up here, so no Alistar anywhere in sight. Gotta be thinking it's somewhere nearby. Stun comes down as they fight in the mid lane. Top lane seems to be skirfuffling as well, but like you said, that Herald drop in the bottom lane guarantees some turret plates. Uh, we've already seen one go down in the mid lane, uh, and that's four more in the bot lane, if not the whole turret. Yeah, and a lot of that a gold, lot of gold is getting fun funneled onto Puppe. Uh, definitely what you want for him. Uh, that's <laughs> four tower plates and the first tower gold. Uh, Going to be split between him and Poppy, but definitely take that. Really good, Harold. Oh, Max. Oh, oh, is there is what you're talking about. The trickster happens in the mid lane, but it might not be enough. One more auto attack will do, and it's a trade one for one. What a fight. Yeah, uh, such a close fight there. I really thought Max was going to come out ahead. Uh, had a nice disguise on, but Spooky is able to trade that back, and that's huge for him. Yeah, and without that mid pressure and uh, ROTM, Focusing down the turret. They might still look for the fight here. And Puppy is able to get out a lot of damage. Drakowski gets the stun against the wall kid. Lazarus might be in trouble, but Beerus, he had TP down. His R is popped and Puppy is in trouble as he goes down as well. The hearing from Beerus is too much. And the flash forward from Bandy as now Drakowski's next on the chopping block and he goes down, taken down by the Alistar. Crookie Crook, flash over the wall, looking for more as the ultimate pops and he's able to get a lot of healing. Bandy, not able to find anything else. Maybe a boot away. Knock up, knock back. As Max trying to go in, trying to find any stun, a little root goes out and crash down happens, but he gets booted away by Bandy. This is a long drawn out dragon fight. Yeah, but uh, gonna be big beneficiaries there. RMD pick up the dragon and some kills for themselves. Uh, Crook walking down to make it not a complete disaster for RTM. Gonna pick up a kill on the back end of that, but uh, gonna be feeling pretty good. Uh, I think Barius. Keeping down was was great for him. Uh, made that 3v4 happen, and with the numbers advantage, able to find a big pickup. Yeah, and then now Crooky Crook is or Cookie Crook is going to have that TP advantage. So maybe a a play back on the other side could happen here as we see him transition into the bot side as the second herald is going to be spawning here soon. Yep, two kills onto Crook. Uh, Large CS lead as well, almost 40 CS. Um, so, gonna be feeling pretty good about that side lane. Want to try to keep him in the side lane as much as possible and avoid the team fights where they can. But gonna rotate him over for the mid lane tower and this Herald fight. Yeah, saving that TP. They think that they can get more value out of it. Uh, another time as uh, Lazarus is also rotating up. But the river control goes over to ROTM as Boy Wonder spots out uh, dinner, diner. A little bit of hesitation going on from both sides as we start dancing here. Drakowski does have his poppy R, so he can boot a couple people out. He starts channeling it, and it goes wide. As the Herald resets, spell shots are just being flown around, but Boy Wonder might be able to find a flank here. Herald started back up. Yep, very the flank slow is spotted here. Out. Crash down away from the fight. So that's one big cooldown that they need to focus on. Okay, Lazarus gets tagged. Now Boy Wonder comes back through. Looks like Jack Modernity <laughs> is kind of go back, but the stun comes out. Puppe has to cleanse away from it. And here comes 
the Maokai are just trying to zone as they take down the Herald, but he goes in and Bandy is all stunned up, but that's not exactly who you want to be focusing as a huge crash down comes through and that's a big pop blossom, but the damage is just too much. They're able to free fire, but Puppy is able to get some damage back. He does have blue gun, but he's taken down as the Syndra goes kind of God mode in this fight. The stun comes out. Drakowski is going to be taken down. That's a huge swing for Reject Modernity. Crook is soon to follow. That's a big pickup. Huge for RMD there. Gonna even the gold back up. Not really a fight I feel like that needed to happen. Uh, I don't think really either team is gonna care too much about the outcome. R RTM uh, is gonna get aced there, but they do pick up the Rift Herald uh, as their one lone prize from that fight. A um, couple kills come through as well. You just have to say worth in chat after that. Yeah. After you get aced for uh for the second herald, that's that's gotta be worth. <laughs> that's the mental saver is, is you gotta say <laughs> worth. Um, and, and and that's what we kind of mentioned, right? What we were looking at in this early game is RTM's team fighting not quite as strong, and they need to be utilizing the side lane pressure of Crook. Um, this Aatrox exceeding uh, expectations in the team fights as well. Yeah, and that. Third Dragon's coming out. We're tied one to one on the Dragon Soul count. Uh, but that third one could be the swing on who starts stacking more and is able to get the Dragon Soul early. Yeah, it can be very nice. And Spooky has kind of quietly been the beneficiary of all these fights. Five kills already on the Syndra, and that uh, elimination button on the Syndra R is going to keep hurting and going to be really hard for Puppe to deal with. Um, so... Him getting ahead is definitely what you want for RMD. Yeah, those stuns uh, seem to keep finding him. Uh, as the, like you said, the the team fight prowess is just way in Reject Modernity's favor right now. Um, as the TP is coming through into mid lane, that could mean the top turret's going down if a fight doesn't break out here. But Max has TP as well as he's split pushing in the top side. But I expect. RDM to be able to get control of this river and take this dragon with ease. It looks like the conceding is happening as Drakowski's over there in the top side. Yeah, after last fight, I think RTM's a little bit wary of team fighting again. Um, gonna just trade uh, the top lane tower for this. Again, this dragon doesn't matter too much in the grand scheme of things. Uh, this is only the second Drake for RMD, so not something that you feel like you have to fight over if you're RTM. Um, but Crook might be caught out here. Yeah, as the Repose comes through, but he's not able to, fi able to find a stun. Uh, as the fighting continues to happen in mid lane, Boy Wonder has to flash away. The Feathers go out and get drawn back, and Bandy is the beneficiary of that one, the flash away from Crook, as he is able to live in the bot side, but the Phantom stun comes through. Spooky's kind of clean with it. Yeah, uh, nice kill there in mid lane. Gonna be happy about that. Also blowing the flash bot lane, so... Um, RMD just trending upwards as we've continued in this game ever since that Rift Herald fight that has been the big uh, win for them. Let me see. I was able to two times quite a bit. Uh, what's your game time at? I'm at 19, 48, 49, 50. Okay, can you two times speed? Because it, it stuck me up to like 20, 2001. Okay, three, four, five. Yeah. And yep, now yep. we're in a pause. Perfect. And now a pause. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The great timing debate. <clears throat> um, but yeah, as we go into a pause here, uh, again, it's probably for the eye drops. But um, surprisingly, at least to me from the feel of the game, it's kind of surprising that ROTM still has about a 1K gold lead uh, sitting in their pockets. Um, I don't know if you feel the same way, but but it doesn't feel like that's how the team fights are going. Yeah, it definitely doesn't feel that way um i think most of it is probably on crook he's still pretty ahead um he's got 40 cs lead he's got an extra tower in his pocket um the kills have eaten up for sure but uh i think they need to be utilizing that side lane pressure a lot more and it's not something that they've really been doing um i think that's where they can kind of realize an advantage because it's not going to be in these team fights uh, they want the skirmishes, they want the 2v2s, um, or the, the quick picks, so. Yeah, so when we're talking about that sideline pressure, what we really haven't seen is uh, much of a 
you know, when you're when you're side laning and you're split pushing, it kind of has to be an overextension to draw pressure to you, right? You need to have that pressure in the side lane and you need to draw people so that you can get stuff on the other side of the map uh, while living at the same time. That's what makes Fiora, Camille, um, all these hyper mobile uh, split pushing champions so good at what they do uh, is because they have the ability to get out. Uh, but we haven't really seen that, you know, confidence um, and, you know, fake overextension uh, that we need to see from the split pushers here. Yeah, and it, it's a little unfortunate because Aatrox has gotten a lot of kills from these fights, so it's evened up that gold discrepancy a little bit. Um, and you're going to be able to actually fight back a little bit against this Fiora more than you would have uh, if we were talking about this, you know, five, seven minutes ago. Um, but so far, Crook on that split, split push. We'll have to see how that's used um, has the TP advantage as well. So I think that's something where they can get a numbers advantage, keep Aatrox to this bot lane. Um, Cause so far, Berus has been using the, the TP so much better, uh, showing up to fights, finding the numbers advantages. And now with that down, um, we'll have to see if RTM can do anything with that. Yeah, we see a big uh, vision advantage uh, for blue side here. If you look around the dra uh, around the Baron pit, uh, some of those deep wards are really important, especially when it comes to those TP flanks. Both are down right now, uh, but that could be huge in the future if uh, our team doesn't sweep it out. Drakowski might have found Spooky, or Spooky found Drakowski. <laughs> Just a little trade back. Yep. Uh, Drakowski didn't really have any backup there. Was uh, on the spy mission all alone. Um, so didn't elect to go in after getting spotted out, but right now, um, doesn't look like RTM's doing too much on the map, trying to get that vision down, trying to fight for that, but maybe this mid lane tower is the next objective. They move Crook to the mid lane to try to help with this. Yeah, it's already very low. A couple auto attacks will do it in as it falls down, and that opens up the map a lot for them to clear out that vision, for them to get their own deep vision for those TP flanks. Yeah, that first mid lane tower, always important, uh, really opens up the map since so much activity happens around the mid lane. Um, and getting that down helps you with your Baron pressure uh, because that wave is going to bounce back a lot sooner with it up. So be happy about that take. Yeah, looking at the side lanes here, um, Crook is going to be able to push that side lane. Somebody's going to have to go answer him. It's probably going to be Beerus as he's basing right now. Um, expect Spooky's TP is up. So. That'll be something to look out for, uh, but that side lane pressure is drawing them back away from that river. Crook's just like, please leave me alone down here. I just want to take your tower, Mr. Aatrox. <laughs> All he needs is two seconds with it, and it's, it's gone. Let me just get in range of your tower. But, uh... At that health, I could see <laughs> one E and two Qs, and the tower is no more. Yep. So he does not need very long with it to, uh, to destroy that structure. Spooky sitting there. Crash down comes through from Boy Wonder. Really great reactions there. Yeah, good buffer. I'm going to be kind of expecting that, but still nice to save some of the damage and get out safely there for Boy Wonder. Um, Rookie Crook. might have found Kid Lazarus here as a Feather Storm comes out. And that's a big cooldown. RTM may yes. just look to try to force this with the Zaya cooldown down, down now. They can uh, look to just engage. I think this is just to force a fight, really, um, with the, that major cooldown off of Zaya. As Zinner might be caught out here, the stun does not land against the wall as the knockup comes through from Bandy onto Drakowski. As they're gonna have to kite back into the river, get some better vision, better angles. Stun comes through and a little pause for me at least. Yep, same. Max yep. Big and the flash in. forward. Oh, and it's huge, a big four man pop blossom comes out, but it might've been turned back on him. They don't have the damage. That was so big, but nothing comes of it. It's crazy two for one trade. Yeah, what an amazing ult there from Max, but he just gets blown up. No one else is able to follow up on Boy Wonder and Max. They were too far in there. Uh, so a nice find there. It's going to be the kill that they wanted onto Lazarus, but two people go down for that, that for RTM. You blow two flashes as well. So it's not going to mean too much, and RTM is going to try to sneak this Drake away. Yeah, they're going to have to do it very fast as this TP came into the mid lane from Spooky as Crook might be caught out now, but he for sure has the repost, so he should be safe. And that dragon does go over, so that evens out to two to two. Uh, I was gonna say that the Wind Soul is very scary on Reject Modernity's team. You pop that on Diner, you pop that on 
uh, Bandy, you pop that on Beerus, and they just run at you, and there's nothing that you can do about it. That is a scary soul. Yeah, both teams are really happy about this soul, I think. Uh, there's a lot of big ultimates from both squads that they would love to get an extra amount of cooldown uh, to help them out there. Fiora is going to have a little bit Keeping of a into the mid lane. Yeah, look at this. They're deciding to pressure mid lane, and that'll draw them out of the river as long as Crook stays safe. Uh, that that allows them to get that vision uh, in the river and uh, clear it out. I like that macro move. I like the. It's it's always good to get that mid shove right before an objective because you're able to walk into the river multiple ways and, and able to get that vision uh, cleared out. <laughs> it's just a lot of posturing here for the last few minutes. Um, and even though we had uh, a big fight a little bit ago, um, ended up being pretty even. RTM getting a dragon and one kill out of it. Whereas uh, RMD getting two kills and um, we'll have to see if something like that happens again. Drakowski gonna spot out a the couple people here. Face checks <laughs> just keep Old happening spooky. around these corners here. I'd like to see if Max can do a little something uh, with the uh, with hiding as somebody else. As Crooky Crook's taking about to half HP, the stun comes through onto dinner, which is not who you want it to be onto. Bandy might be looking. Boy Wonder stuns him up. As now the river might become uh, reject modernities, but the knockback goes through. The stun comes out. That might be all she wrote for dinner as he's trying to kite back. And that's huge knock up there from uh, the crash down. But notably, Puppe falls, but a big up and down happens from Max. It's rooted as Bandy's not able to take very much damage as he's through his ultimate. Spooky is just firing away on that backside. Max might be looking for more, but he's knocked up, but he's not stunned. Boy Wonder. Pops down and in, and he's going to be taken out. No, he still lives. Max is able to take out Bandy, as that's another thing happening there as uh, <laughs> Spooky falls. My client popped up in the middle of that team fight. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> the curse, the play-by-play. -play. Uh, yeah. The end, though, RT, I'm going to be pretty happy about that. Living with just slivers of health. Um, find the fight that they needed to, and I think that pick onto uh, Diner is what, what you really want. It's a nice beefy target that you can take out with the true damage on Crook's ult. Um, we're able to get a couple procs of that, get some healing zone down, but as we saw on the other side of the fight, Puppe is uh, feeling a little bad. Uh, <laughs> Syndra just pressed the R button, and uh, there is no more Puppe, no more damage for RTM. Just barely able to find the kills at the end of that, so this is getting spooky. Uh, it's RTM that definitely has to execute these things a lot better, I think. Uh, I would say it is getting spooky. <laughs> if uh, you're picking up what I'm putting down, but yeah, know that Unleash Power basically makes you turn off your monitor as a Baron Sneak might be coming up here. Uh, Puppe does have a lot of damage, um, and the Hex Splash goes over the wall, but I think you know, Baron does do a lot of damage, and this posturing is always something that we're looking at. I wonder if they're trying to bait them in here with a good ward placement for Yeah, Max. it might be the choke again, as Dinner might be caught out yet again. Beerus... Trying to get some uh, zoning going on there. Every fight happens in this choke. That's uh, yeah, what has happened the last few times. And RTM's won one of the f fight nights in that choke, and RMD's won the other. So they are going to have the fast track onto the mid lane here. Uh, RTM is going to try to bait them to the Baron. Yeah, and they have a couple of uh, a couple of flank opportunities, but they're sniffed out. Bandy bumps him away as Beerus is able to sniff out Boy Wonder on the other side of it. Baron about half HP. Puppe does have white gun, uh, which means that he can pretty pretty quickly uh, burst down Baron. But Dragon Dragowski goes in. Oh, and the steal comes through as surely it is blue side. That's going down. It's a triple kill for Puppe as he's going forward. It's a quadra kill. Give him the Pinta. Give him the Pinta. No, they stole oh, no. it. Brooke, what are you doing? A Pinta was on the table for Puppe. But notably, the Baron was stolen away by dinner. But man, what a team fight coming through after the objective. Yeah, you can't really stop the Maokai combo. He just outsmites you with the Q plus smite. But RTM says, I don't care if you get this Baron. We're just going to take all your lives. Uh, find the fight that they needed to there. And that might mean the game because it's just Alistar here. It's going to be close. I think that they're going to go for it as the first turret is going to fall in the second soon after as they go forward. 
Ricky is not long for this world. Moo Moo goes the Alistar as he falls down, and the Nexus is soon to follow. That's game one going to ROTM. Yeah, maybe not the way we expected this one to end, uh, but Puppe with the <laughs> quad <at> kill <laughs> finds it. Make sure you report Crook after this one. Stealing the Penta, what a dirty player. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to see how they mental reset for game two. I'm sure Puppe is in shambles. What a game, though. What a team fight. Uh, he just had crazy guns for that. The white did so much damage as well as the green coming out and just able to shoot from a million miles away. Uh, big damage coming through. Uh, and then Max just had those multiple multi-man uh, pop blossoms that came through that game. It was super impressive. Um, you know, a little iffy there in the mid game <laughs> as the posturing around the objectives was, was kind of putting you on edge. But, but a great game one. Yeah, a really nice find there. Uh, Going to be pretty happy about that performance overall. Definitely some things to clean up, some of the skirmishes, some of the fights for OTM. But uh, going to be happy to kind of sneak away with that one after all, all momentum had shifted to RMD. So uh, excited to see what this game two will be. And we will be back in a little bit uh, with game two. Do not go anywhere.
Hey, thanks for the raid, middle sticks. Uh, welcome. We are in between games here. Should be getting into draft number two pretty soon. Uh, yeah, if you missed game one, you missed a banger. You missed <laughs> an early turret dive, uh, a lot of objective posturing, and then a Baron flip, a Baron steal, a quadra kill, and a really close game in. So, I don't think you it's could. my juices pumping more than uh, <laughs> posturing around objectives. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, fun is, the the most fun thing to watch in these objectives. <laughs> um, the Baron Dance is always a fun, but yeah, the, uh, I think the Quadra Kill is a little bit more exciting. The Stolen Pinta, I should say. I should say Stolen Pinta, because it was there on for the taking. It really was. Uh, one guy left, Puppe in range, in his sights, and Crook just swiped in to steal that one away, so. Living up to his namesake. <laughs> Definitely so. Had a couple heists in that one. Uh... I got, I was thinking during the break that uh, I have I have a good one for dinner that I'll probably say during the cast, but that, <laughs> I, I think you can go ahead and, and assume what that one's going to be. Well, RTM is ready. We are waiting on uh, reject modernity to show to uh, R up, and then we'll, we'll be into draft for this one. Yeah, and I'm expecting to see pretty similar draft uh, bands to come through. I'm sure the picks will be a lot different. The sides are changing up. So there we go. Uh, reject modernity has chosen the red side. Return of the will be on blue side, which means that they are able to have that first pick. So I'm expecting them to maybe leave that Kaisa open because uh, that's kind of a it forces red side to ban it. Um, but other than that, I, I'm expecting to see the Talia off the table. Um, I'm expecting to see, you know, maybe the Rengar, uh, but, um, you know, that's just kind of a comfort ban. I think that was coming through. Yeah, definitely. So um, oh. something that... Uh dinner is very used to is that Rengar champ uh, Kaisa going to be the first champ off the board for RTM say we don't want that pick and uh, Kaisa Rengar actually they're just the same bands here so far for RTM as they were in red side in game one poppy one thing to note one yeah is the poppy taken off the table so they're going to be forcing Drakowski onto something different that poppy did make a lot of plays early uh, and was just hard to maneuver around in those team fight posturings around those objectives because you had to always be watching out for that poppy ultimate uh, don't want to be knocked away uh, and then uh, have to face a 4v5 as that Tali is coming through so it is the same bands here in game number two for return of the middle sticks as we see what reject modernity uh, rounds out their uh, third ban in this first phase with there's a lot of uh, picks on the table here that are um, our high prio, you've got LeBlanc on the table, you got Rel on the table, you got Maokai, and uh, that was the first pick. Oh, the Tristana I forgot about. RTM insta locks that. Gonna be I was going to mention happy. that the, the Tristana <laughs> uh, Reject Modernity had taken it off the table in that first game, but it is such a great flex pick um that return of the middle six just decides to slam it v1 as wukong and rel comes out that dive composition is coming straight through as ivern is another huge jungler that we've been seeing uh throughout all levels of play he's just so strong right now he's got a really fast clear uh he's really annoying with all of his shields daisy's just another body on the field that you can't send skill shots through uh so i i honestly would be okay with the ivern pickup as as they go towards kind of a disengaged comp because wukong rel are very one dimensional yeah and it's really nice to have an enchanter with an adc um, especially if you have double marksman which i assume this tristana is going to go to the mid lane uh having that extra enchanter very very nice um doesn't mean the rel is going to go over there's also a possibility for leblanc uh but not sure if spooky plays that based on uh it being up last draft and not picked so nautilus is going to be hovered here and take it Yep, and then I could see Reject Modernity going a uh, AD carry here that enables 
um, the engage uh, Sivir comes to mind. Uh, anything that can really follow up on that engage or empower it, and then maybe take away something that would do really well into that engage, maybe banning that Zaya uh, here in this second round. Um, but I'm assuming that they're going to pick up an 80 carry here that can go along. Oh, and an Orn actually. So wow. kind of really going hard on that engage. I like the Orn ban into the inst or the Orn pick into the instant ban Fiora. Yeah, uh, that's uh, definitely <laughs> not a matchup you want to play. It is kind of nice uh, to be able to do that early. Uh, RTM hovering the eight trucks ban. That's I think a little that's confusing. A, I, think, I think I think they're sending a message. Yeah. They're saying you should message. ban this. <laughs> uh, don't forget about the other champs that can play into you. Syndra, going to be the last, the ban. Switch to the last moment there. Uh, I do expect Aatrox to be coming off the table for reject here. Uh, Orn doesn't do very well into it, and uh, it's, a, it's a pretty strong champ, so... Um, but there's a lot still that can be played in the Orn. The nice thing about picking it on R3 here is you do get two bands to take away counters. Um, but that being said, there are a lot of things you can play in the Orn. Olaf. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure. The, Reject Modernity's game plan is go in, right? Like you press all your R buttons uh, at once and you go in. So I'm really hoping that Return of the Middle Sticks identifies that and then drafts more disengage you know it's kind of the uh the rock to their to their scissors um, <laughs> yep if i was to put a uh you know a metaphor on it but they oh. ban away the zaya <laughs> the i was hoping that they would leave that up and maybe pick it themselves so are you hinting at a gwen pick there i thought you'd be a little cheeky oh, uh, a gwen would be really good here uh, yep. So Gwyn just does amazing into Orn. It's the classic Orn counter pick. You already have an 80 carry uh, that you're flexing towards mid lane. So then you have that split damage on the top side of the map uh, that Ivern's not going to be bringing any damage for. So um, I do like the Gwyn pickup. Um, I'm not sure if Crook plays him. Do you know? Or plays her? I'm pretty sure. Uh, we have not seen it out of him yet, but... He plays a lot of champs. Uh, it's definitely in the pool. Uh, but there's a lot of things that are still available as well. You've got things like Cassante. You've got uh, Trendemir that we saw from him. We've got Rumble still on the table. And uh, of course that Aatrox is still up as well. Misfortune gonna be the lock-in for Puppe. That's a new one. Yeah, I think it's kind of odd if they have such a engage heavy comp and you take a immobile ADC, but that Gwyn lock in is what we were looking for there. So that's a huge pickup on that top side of the map. I think it really counters Wukong and Orn and Varus to some extent because you can just uh, Hollowed Mist his ultimate ability um, and then it just passes right through you. So uh, I really like the Gwyn pickup. Misfortune pickup, I'm a little bit on the edge about, <laughs> but you know, after seeing last game, you never know what could happen. Yeah, uh, it is going to be, I think, difficult for this Misfortune to maneuver. A um, lot of ways to cancel. Uh, I don't know. Felt like there are a lot of things left up that were maybe better picks. But that being said, uh, if MF can somehow find a, uh, most of their channel of R can be pretty good. Um, and maybe they just like it into the Varus. I'm not sure exactly what the thought process is there for RTM. But uh, gonna see Puppe on a new champ, so. I do have to say, uh, there is a lot of scaling options on both sides, but Orn Cassiopeia is one of the strongest scaling duos in the game. Uh, once those ornaments come in for Cassiopeia, uh, she just becomes so strong. She has that extra item from not having boots. Um, and if Orn is able to stand in front of her and she's just able to machine gun out uh, her spells, it becomes really hard to get onto her. So uh, we're going to have to see what flanks that they can come up with. Uh, again, it's that posturing, you know, around the, uh, the objectives that we're going to be looking at. Yeah, definitely so. Um, and as we saw from RMD, they really executed pretty well in a lot of those team fights. So to go back to that team fight comp, go into that hard engage, the easy go buttons, um, that's going to be uh, 
potentially the difference maker here, and we saw they did it last game. They can do it. Um, definitely something they're comfortable on. And to RTM, it's going to be a lot of being able to uh, see if they can disengage, see if they can utilize some side lane pressure that Gwen should just free win against that Ornn. Um, and that's where I think they're going to be able to realize their uh, advantage a little bit. I, that being said, Gwen definitely a better team fighter than the Fiora, so we can see that. Um, Ivern also trying to make it a 6v5 in those instances, so double marksman comp with Ivern always does pretty well. Yeah, and we are going to be hopping into second draft here soon. We're just doing some uh rearranging in the lobby riot please add more than four spectator slots please yeah <laughs> if, dear god it, if not just for rearranging team comps yeah that, it's so nice we uh we've been practicing on tournament realm they give you 20 spectator slots on tournament realm uh, oh so I, i'm not asking for 20 riot just, just like eight eight would be great it, yeah, anything. Six would be better. <laughs> anything more than four. Please, please. Uh, but as we hop into this, um, one thing that I wanted to take a look at uh, is this mid lane matchup, the Tristana versus the Cassiopeia. Um, it kind of becomes a, a little bit of a battle of uh, junglers on how this matchup goes, I think, because Tristan is able to jump in, Cassiopeia is able to put down the Miasma and just keep her from jumping again, even if she blows up a bomb. So, um, kind of a little bit of a counter there, but uh, you know, after last game, they were both playing pretty trade heavy. So, I think whichever way it swings will be, it was kind of like the top lane last game, where you know, once one person gets ahead, it just kind of cascades into a waterfall effect. And I think that's what the mid lane is going to be looking like this game. Yeah, Tristana does have uh, the range advantage over Cassiopeia, but one big thing is uh, how the use of the Miasma. Um, if you're able to get that down before Tris can jump away, uh, you have some potential ganks set up. Um, it's going to be mostly Cassiopeia trying to scale into this late game, though. You really want to play around that two-item spike that Cassiopeia gets. Um, and that's where I think... Uh, if you're RMD, you're not going to be too worried about what happens in this early game. You're going to be wanting to look for those team fights around that 20 minute mark. Try to just get what gold you can in the early game. Try to keep it as even as possible. Uh, and your scaling um, does really well, especially with uh, the ornaments that come through. Yeah, and then looking at the top lane like we talked about before, that is just a Gwyn favored lane. There's not much that Orn can do about it. Uh, it is just all the true damage that comes through <laughs> is impossible for Orin to deal with. Uh, you know, the natural counter to true damage is extra HP, right? Yep. But Orin's passive, which like adds a quarter of your resistances to your resistances, means that he's going to be building resistances, right? So yep. uh, that kind of deters him from building HP. If you only build HP, sure you'd be countering a little bit of true damage but then you're not making use of your passive at all so uh it's just an amazing counter i really like the gwyn pickup here um it's also really good into wukong and rel you know if gwyn has people diving onto her that's what she wants when she has people kiting her back that's when she struggles to to stick on other people so um, I really like the Gwyn pick up there. Uh, it really counters their R1, R2, uh, especially. Yeah, definitely so. Um, one thing we could see Orin do, I don't know if he'll do it here, but because there's only one real big AP source, uh, this is w one of those games that screams to me, oh, I need health and I need to counter one specific type of damage from one champion. Uh, <laughs> You know what Anathema's time. Yep. Anathema's time. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. that's a lot of health. I mean, it's like 800 health. Uh, you're you're reducing the damage from the person you're going to be facing the most. Um, so we'll see if uh, it, it, it gets picked up here. Um, but I think it's a really solid item uh, if he goes at second, especially since you're going to be spending so much time in this side lane, just bouncing the wave back uh, to Gwen. Yeah, that is a great point. Um, that's something that we're going to have to see if uh, Beerus comes up with. Uh, you know, I feel like that item is so overlooked in yep. most team comps. Usually there's like 
usually in solo queue at least uh it's like an 80 top an 80 uh jungle in 80 80 right yep. and then there's one uh magic damage dealer in the mid lane so as a tank player it's good to get your first items right uh so you need your boots uh for you, you get tabbies in that case um but then you build that one item anathemas that completely counters uh one of their champions and then just stack armor and then you just become unkillable it's absolutely insane i feel like it's so overlooked yeah and very helpful too especially on a character that's as elusive as gwen you get that extra cc bonus onto her reduce that tenacity um so help when the few times that you're gonna get the opportunity to cc her uh help that out a little bit so yeah, that's exactly right. Um, I'm I, w while we're on the topic of Orn, I'm an Orn enjoyer. Look, I'm a <laughs> Gwyn enjoyer too. Uh -huh. Those are those are. I play four champions. I play Orn, Gwyn, Camille, and GP right now. Okay, right uh -huh. now. Uh, and so I've played the Orn Gwyn matchup on both sides. And when I tell you that it is miserable and unplayable, <laughs> I I mean it. Uh, if you don't ban like. Yora, yes, you'd need to be in Fiora, one. especially, yep. yeah, especially when Crook said that, like, showed that he can play Fiora, or he's willing to play Fiora. Yep. Number two is the Gwyn. Number three, probably the Camille. Yeah. But all those champions are just so hard to face uh, as Orn, so. Yep. Um, that means that Ivern could be opened up to go to these other lanes and try to get that mid lane matchup that's very volatile ahead. Uh, that Nautilus matchup where he has a ton of setup for his jungler and a lot of damage to misfortune. Uh, they could get a lead through the bot lane that way. So I feel like I feel like having that Giga counter pick in top lane really opens up the jungler to to travel around the map. Yeah, and I, I feel like that's one thing we haven't really touched on in our time here is Drakowski Ivern. He hasn't played this champ all season, coming out of nowhere seemingly. Uh, and it's all it's one of those champs that can be really sneaky with the path thing so we'll have to see uh how he really pilots this champ that we haven't seen much on and has a very high skill ceiling um especially with the jungle clears yeah so i, I am excited to see what his clear is going to be um i think for the most part uh i'm not an ivern expert whatsoever but i think you mark one of your buffs go mark all three of your other buffs or all three of the other side of the camps and then come back down uh mark one camp smite it take your first buff go up and take the other camps it's something along those lines yep um so we'll see he probably knows better than i do but um <laughs> yes not. it is a we'll very see. exciting pick <laughs> yeah <laughs> we have not <laughs> seen drakowski on this pick uh definitely something new but a lot of uh, junglers have been playing it especially with um uh, an AD mid laner. Really nice to get two ADCs to help out. And it looks like we have to whisper because we're casting. They're being very sneaky. Yeah, a lot of a lot of pings are coming out as they spot out the Orn here. Drakowski, the Q hits. The root goes over. Everybody's able to go to him. They flash forward into nowhere as he has to start E. But he might be over as Crookie Crook pops the ghost. They're able to go forward. No blast cone yet. And Beerus is sure to fall. One, two more autos. That's yeah. first blood. And that I want does to, not make I that late any easier. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure I'm on the same time as you. I'm going to double okay, up until I will also. the max. That stuttering at the beginning always is a little crazy. As a yep, a death, a fanatic death bush was awaiting here. <laughs> I don't mind this uh, kind of trying to find something on the other side here. Uh, they do have the ward down, so that, I think that means. Yeah. yeah, they have a couple of wards down. They're able to spot out there that the red is being taken, though, from the Ivern. But Ivern has one of the best invades in the game yep. if you wanted to go over to the enemy red. <laughs> uh, you just press your passive, and then you press your smite button, and uh, not much <laughs> you can do against that. Um, the jungle so it, camp is free. It does look like we're going to get a split map here, which I think really benefits RTM uh, because Gwen already has one kill. Um, Ivern setting up passives on those camps, and we see already moving to the top side. Max, oh, such a big chunk there. Oh, it's dirty. The level two advantage gets you so much, and it is such a big power spike, especially on Tristana, where that damage just comes through so heavily. Speaking of level two advantages, bot lane able to level up first. 
as a dive might be coming through that's always something to watch out for when a split map is like this when there's a split map like this is that third wave dive um it's really hard on the bot side because there's two people you have to kill you know we saw it last game and top is a lot easier to execute especially when you can get some heavy trading early but some full hp is just not going to cut it and so we see dinner move away Max jumps in. It's going to be another big chunk. Yeah, it's a really easy trade for Max, uh, just because if they see that uh, Spooky uses a cooldown or something, um, can punish that, can just jump in with the all-in, and really outranges with the autos on the Cassiopeia, so it makes it really difficult. Crook. Doing okay. I'm trading back and forth. Yep. Those brittle, the brittle grass procs are <laughs> what kills you in lane. Those things <laughs> chunk. As he jumps forward, a tower dive is coming in here. Spooky's gonna go down the flash away. Oh, oh no. he lives! Oh, the tick! The tick of the pot keeps him alive. Max with a clean dive. Yeah, and able to jump out. Probably sub 50 HP there, but Boy Wonder trying oh. to land the hook doesn't quite find yeah, it. Yeah, the flash hook does not quite land. Lazarus has to flash away as well. He still has Ghost. Boy Wonder may be in trouble here, trying to wait for this yeah, hook to come crash back. down might come through. Airborne, as he roots him up, Boy Wonder is gonna go down for sure. Dinner, trying to see if he can get anything onto Puppe, but he's just going to to walk it out. But no, they're looking for a dive, actually. The stun comes through, the flash away, and the flash forward. Dinner's eating well tonight as the trade back goes over towards uh, Boy Wonder. Beerus is not long <laughs> for this world. No flash. That's an easy gank in the top lane. It is a bloodbath all over. Yeah, nonstop kills here for the last minute or so. Uh, first that kill in the mid lane, and then a nice punish there on the bot side. Boy Wonder not landing the flash hook. I couldn't quite rein it in and then gets punished. I think Puppe didn't have to die there, walked up a little bit too far um, and gets punished there as well, so. The flash forward, but Bandy's here. Bomb is able to explode and so the jump gets reset. Uh, that was a good roam from Bandy, um, knowing that Max is playing aggressively, uh, but Max is able to get out of there pretty clean. Yeah, Max is always gonna be in a pretty vulnerable spot. Uh, the Tristana passive is gonna make sure of that. I'm um, going to push in those mid waves all the time. Shouldn't really be a time that uh, Cassiopeia overcomes that. So going to be some gank opportunities uh, if they can set that up, especially with Spooky nearing that level six mark and the stun in the ultimate. Yeah, and Crook up here in the top lane. Uh, the trade back and forth pre level six pre first item is actually really important. But as I'm talking about that, a fight's breaking in on the bot lane. Boy Wonder might be caught out again. He's knocked up by the crash down and he's going to be donated over to Lazarus. A little face check there in the bot lane gone wrong. Yeah, a great punish there, knowing that both flashes are down in this bot lane. Uh, really good return there. And that is going to be the Drake and a kill. So things turning up great for the bot side of RMD. Level six for Beerus, he hits it first. <laughs> Crook really needs level six here if he's gonna be able to fight this pre-item. I've heard pre first item here in the top side. Oh. Uh, oh, the flash forward, but he's, <laughs> I don't think it's gonna get much. Oh, yeah. he gets executed no somehow. Way. Oh, no he doesn't way. get hit. That's oh my tough. goodness. Crook. Yeah, trying to land the last Q. I can't believe no damage came down. So, in the end, really not that I mean, bad. I mean, it is a burn of the flash, uh, which could get punished later, but doesn't matter that much. You had the wave shoved in, so Orn's not going to be in a bad spot. It didn't even give up any extra gold. No, but Crook not dying there is really good for him. Picking up XP, of course, you'd want yeah. to kill uh, if you are sitting there in the top lane, but... Uh, yeah, kind of a crazy exchange. Like I was saying, though, that first item, once that first item comes through for Gwyn, that's when it really becomes just absolutely unplayable. You heal through all the damage that uh, Orn does. But until then, Orn can actually have those tradeback opportunities like we've been seeing here in this laning phase. Yeah, we're going to have to see uh, how much Crook is able to pick up. I don't think he's quite on that first item, 850 gold in the inventory. So I'm going to just pick up some more components, scaling towards that first item break point that you talked about. Let's see if we get a moment of quiet here. A lot of a lot of fighting uh, <laughs> happening in the first seven minutes of this one. Seven kills, we're at a kill a minute. So you know it's been a, an entertaining one if that's happening. 
I think those are rookie numbers. I think we could bump those numbers up. Uh, <laughs> I, would, I, 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 would, I would take it. If, yeah. Two kills a minute. That's going to be the new standard. Uh, nice steal from Drakowski in here. Uh, puts the passive down, and uh, goodbye, camp. Friend of the forest is coming with me, so. Yep. And he had that timer on. Uh, Spooky might be in trouble here, but the... Q from the Ivern doesn't hit, but yeah, he had that timer on that red buff from taking it in the first clear, so he knew exactly when it was spawning. I uh, was able to get there and able, able to get the smite away. So, very good pathing here. Crook just playing with the wave. We see another CS discrepancy open up in top lane. I mean, that's expected, especially with how the level one went with the kill going over to Gwen. Um, but. Urs doing everything he can to try to keep that as even as possible. Just try to scale to this uh, later stage of the game. Yeah, with uh, this matchup, it's hard for Orn to auto attack the wave. Uh, every every ounce of damage that he puts on the wave is usually spells, uh, and that makes it a lot harder to last hit, especially when you're trying to, to deal damage to your laner at the same time. Um, it makes it really tough. So that that see, I could only see that CS lead growing here in the top lane unless something crazy happens. Zero three zero for Beerus, um, kind of quietly uh, getting a poor scoreline. I don't actually. I don't even know if it's very quiet. It's <laughs> it's pretty loud. But uh, again, one of those deaths was an execute. So not as um, not quite as bad as uh, it appears. Um, and you right. know. It's in a rough spot. Like you pick the Ord blind, you know you're gonna be get it, getting countered, and Crook doing an okay job of punishing, but really hasn't found another kill. So we'll have to wait, probably wait for that first item to see uh, if things start snowballing for Crook. Yeah, bot lane is what I'm looking at right now, though. Um, but a, an E in from Beerus as the Ornhorn horn is sounded. And he's able to find the knock up. Cookie Crook is gonna be uh, slicing and dicing him up, though. As he turns it back towards him, Beerus just didn't have the damage. And yeah. that's another kill towards Crook. <laughs> and I think that's going to be the last moment that uh, Beerus had any agency in this oh, one. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That's definitely enough to finish uh, the first <laughs> item. And that is just... That's... that's uh, Say goodbye to your health bar. Mode. Yep. Very depressing. Uh, and that's going to be the, the tower plate as well. Um, Crook? Definitely... The one with all the agency in this one, and RTM should look to play around him. I think uh, they've got that Rift Herald. I'd love to see them move that up towards Crook, try to give him even more gold, try to give him, make him even stronger in the side lane. Because I don't think Wukong Orn even has a chance in the 2v2 if Crook uh, gets going like he is, um, especially because you don't get the utilization of the Wukong passive. Uh, you know, he stacks armor. Not the MR that is needed for that one, so. You won't believe what type of damage Gwyn deals. <laughs> you won't believe it. <laughs> but yeah, no, yeah, 100%. Um, and we see that first item breakpoint come through. Crooky Crook could honestly just fight uh, Beerus in this wave at this point. Um, that ultimate does do a lot of damage. Um, so that's probably what he's going to wait for. Stun might come through. Dinner jumping on to Boy Wonder. The ultimate comes through. The Cyclone makes him airborne, but he's not able to find anything to flash away from the Varus ultimate. As now, Max has a flank here. The big R, the double kill as he jumps over the wall. Bandy's not able to find the crash over the wall. And that's a triple kill picked up from Max. Yeah, and they're going to chase for more here. As Max jumps forward, the stun comes through, though, as he's getting damaged, damaged, bleeding. And no, no knock up from Daisy. The yes. Q goes wide. Wow. Spooky just barely able to make it out of that one, but what a massacre there. Max picking up the triple kill and finds an absolutely beautiful uh, flank to start that off. So great play from them uh, in, in an area where I thought uh, RMD was going to be able to fight, uh, able to find a win for themselves, but so far have not found that and now we have ballooned out to a 5k gold lead here at 11 minutes for our team that is insane uh just so the caster knows i did fast forward all the way again because cool. i think we had a couple of pauses there um i'm at 12 08 09 10. yep we're synced okay <clears throat> perfect beer is looking to get those uh procs going as he ease in 
Crooked Crook does have that R, so he has the chase down potential, but doesn't know if somebody else is in the area. Oh, as Max is actually going in, he does not care. He gets stunned up as Lazarus is sure to get that kill, but the big burst damage comes through, and it's a trade one for one. Uh, wow. Yeah, Max got the one for one, but the jump was uh, a little sus there. Um, that is going to be a big yeah. shutdown on a Lazarus, so I think RMD is definitely going to take that. You, you take that 700 cold shutdown, put it in your pocket, and say, well, I got more out of it than you did, so. Ooh. Crooky Crook, it may be in trouble here as the triple brittle combo comes through. Beer is not able to have any mana or damage left. Slow goes on to dinner as uh, a smite comes through onto Daisy. That's kind of rude. Um, is this going to be pause a for big me. pause? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know why. Maybe there was a quick. I'm not uh... sure, but. This could be a solo kill from Drakowski onto dinner as he keeps auto attacking, <laughs> auto attacking. Those bushes do give you vision, uh, but he's able to chunk him out a lot. Is this Seen the this second before. bush? <laughs> yeah, and uh, Boy Wonder might be going down as the ultimate comes out. Bandy donates the kill over to Spooky as now the speed up comes from Spooky hitting the cues. Puppy has to flash away the flash forwards from Spooky and the R lands. Dinner might be in trouble now. Uh, as the jump away happens from Max. Max is able to pick up a kill. He has a reset. Spooky's low on HP. Bandy as well. Might be in a little bit of trouble. Probably has the crash down now. But is able to just speed out of there. Yeah. Uh, nice turn of events there for RMD. Gonna definitely take those kills when you can get them. Uh, and Spooky really showing uh, the power of the Cassiopeia able to chase that fight down and uh boy wonder again walking into danger it's happened twice now so yeah the face checks might need to be uh pulled back just a little bit but max has six kills here as bandy is looking for a little bit of something the stun isn't able to land and max is scary strong he's got he's almost two items already at 14 minutes yeah, he might have it on this base. Uh, he is sitting in this bot lane bush, but they know he's there because of the ward. Oh, he wanted to stop that back. Yep. He wanted that <laughs> he badly. He wanted it really bad. Yeah, and that mid lane tower is also down for uh, ROTM. Not quite sure when that got taken, but uh, I'm sure it, it was been... off map when Max was uh, just hitting it as Tristana. She she tends to do that. You know. Yeah, that was at, taken at nine minutes. Uh, so the Tristana is able to do a ton of damage to turrets. Speaking of damage to turrets, Crook is doing a lot of damage onto this top structure. Not quite able to take it on this wave, but you have the entire squad coming up both sides. This is going to be a skerfuffle in the top lane. If they're able to find each other. Yep. Max doesn't have TP notably here, so can't join, but should get a lot on the side lane. Um, left isolated on these turrets. Gonna definitely take this bot lane turret and is gonna head towards the second one. Crook does not need a wave. He does not care. He's able to steal away the turret from that top side. Maybe he's able to find Beerus as well. Everybody had kind of vacated from the top side. The E away from Beerus and the flash as well. Wow, he's he's having to use a lot to get out of that matchup, and this is when the matchup gets impossible. Yep. And it does look like are we gonna see a radiant virtue from Beerus there? It looks like we might have to when when you're in a matchup such as this, you have to play for the team fight. Yep. Uh, you're not going to be playing towards that side lane, so you don't even have to worry about you know what kind of damage you're going to deal to an enemy laner. You're more worried about providing that uh, utility towards your team. So I actually like the pickup. I think it's smart because um, you're going to be looking towards uh, team fighting more than side laning. Yeah, definitely makes sense. Uh, you are not living for the side lane, so. Um... Wanting to play more towards that. As we s talk about the team fights, we're probably going to see one here in the next 40 seconds. Uh, people trying to get their resets in, be as strong as they can for this fight. Uh, Dragon's even right now at one to one. There's a little death bush is set up there from Max, but they're able to sniff him out. It is Hextech map, which means that we have the gates available. So a little bit added mobility. Uh, it's actually really good for dinner uh, here in this dragon pit because you're able to go across and maybe get a steal off uh, if you're not able to walk into the river. Crookie is going forward, using that hollowed mist just to check, make sure he doesn't get caught out by anything in clear vision. Bambi 
is looking as well, but a little choke point might be not where they want to fight in. Is a big knockup happens. The Ornhorn doesn't find anybody. Neither does the uh, stun, but that's a huge MFR coming over the top of the entire team fight. But it's a shutdown onto two members as Max is able to take down one. He's on a killing spree. Flash forward from dinner, not able to find anything, and he's taken down by Drakowski. Now Spooky is soon to follow. A jump forward, but a crash down as Bandy is able to fall. And Max falls as well. That's a huge team fight, but it's a win for ROTM as they're able to pick up the dragon. Yeah. Um, not only going to be some shutdowns that go over as well for RMD, so not the worst here. They trade almost even uh, on the kills, but that dragon going to be the prize. Uh, probably would have picked up Varus too if Max had not ulted him out, but uh, Lazarus going to be very happy about that. Uh, getting out to safety in that one. So as we approach that Baron timer in two minutes here, uh, let's take the stock of the game here. We got about a 6K gold lead for RTM. They are firmly in the driver's seat of this one. RMD trying to fight back, trying to find uh, numbers, and they've got the objective bounties popping up for them. So we'll have to see if they're able to pick anything up to help even out that gold, see if they can pick up some side lane towers or something. Yeah, one thing that you saw that RDM has going for them. Oh, as Drakowski goes over very, very confidently through the hex gate as Dinner has to run away. Uh, but one thing that you saw was that the team fight from Gwyn is not as powerful as the team fight from Orn. So having that uh, available is kind of huge. As Max goes in, the TP's coming through. Oh, and he's knocked up. He's not able to actually buffer it correctly. Beerus flash away. As he goes in, knocks him up, and that's another shutdown. Lazarus might be caught. Boy, Wonder misses the wall. He is surely going down as well. That's a big swing now uh, in favor of RDM. Yeah, nice pickup. And Spooky, absolutely perfect TP timing there. I don't know if that was talked about in comms, but it was so quick. As soon as Max hit that launch button in, he was on it on the TP, and that's going to net him. Uh, a shutdown kill onto the Tristana. Going to be pretty happy about that. Um, yeah, this Trist was so huge. Had uh, two shutdowns on her that they, they had to chunk through. So yep. with those firmly down, uh, that's going to help even things up just a little bit here. Um, see if we can get side lane towers for RMD as well. That would help that out. Yeah, the overconfidence from Max uh, is how I'd put it. He's been jumping in any chance that he gets uh, and RDM is, you know, to their credit, been doing a really great job punishing that. Cassiopeia has picked up this Rylai's, which um, is going to be, I think, helpful uh, trying to chase down some of the elusive targets here. Yeah, and the Roa is stacking 8 out of 10 on that for her. As another jump in from Max goes on to Beerus, but I don't know if he has the damage for it. Jumps in again. Oh no, dinner is here. Max isn't quite able to find the kill. Jumps away, but he's not able to get all the way away. Uh, as he's going to trade his life for maybe a Baron attempt. Yeah, they're going to have TP on the Orin here to come in, but the jungler is nowhere near. So I think this should be able to secure, but we'll see if they can get the fight. It's spotted out. Bandy goes in. The Ornhorn comes over the top, knocks up two. His Puppe releases uh, his ultimate, and that's two kills going towards ROTM. But Spooky uh, is able to find uh, Gwyn on the backside, not quite able to take her down as the Baron goes over to ROTM. Now it's the escape game. Dinner trying to chase. Ease forward, Cyclones to knock up. Strakowski is able to hide in the bush and they're able to get out. That's actually kind of a clean escape there from ROTM. Could have been a lot worse as they were dancing on a nice edge. Yeah, they are going to get three Barons uh, out with that. Nice pickup. They see Dinner went down to that bot side, left the Baron vulnerable. Um, and RTM able to just barely sneak away with that one. Um, Crook also going to pick up a tower for himself in that mid lane, but they're going to chase him down with the Hex Gates. Yeah, uh, you can see Dinner is posturing towards him, but no Cyclone available means no knockup. As now maybe he might be the one that's caught out. Max puts the bomb on with the W. I see Max jumps forward again, but he's stunned up and he's going to go down. Dinner might follow. 
Boy Wonder is looking to, to make an impact. Spooky might have gone too deep now as Crook is able to find a kill. Spooky finally goes down, and that's another big hook onto the bottom lane. And wow, that's a big fight out of nowhere that goes straight into ROTM's favor. Yeah, not at the fight that you expected to see here, but with the Baron buffs buffing up these minions, that should mean a lot for ROTM here. Uh, the Orn, not that intimidating. Yeah, posturing to, uh, to try to kill Puppe. He does have the ultimate as the Orn horn sounds, but he's CC'd through it and he's taken out and Puppe is able to snag that one. Yeah, the redemption coming through big there. That is going to stop, I think, the RTM push. They should t pick up this tower, but I don't think they're going to be able to push for that inhibitor with everybody else respawning. And they want to be back on map for this Drake, which is in 10 seconds. Yeah, Crook's got to be careful here. Cyclone comes out, but he's able to find a lot of damage onto Dinner. Dinner, one oh. shot. The minions might take him down, and they do. <laughs> and Crook is able to dodge out on the arrow. Looks like he's out of there. Wow. Yep, and that's going to be the easy dragon take for RTM with no jungler on the map. I have to say, Max has not been uh, scared of jumping in uh, no. so far, and uh, that's maybe to his detriment more than it has been to his advantage here. So he uh, will not be deterred, no matter how many <laughs> times they try to they try to punish him for jumping in. He sees red, he will go, and for the most part, this game it has worked out. Yeah, uh, especially that early game, but. Um, last few times we've seen it has not been super great, but RTM's been able to win without him uh, putting in much damage. So, um, yeah, this Gwyn seven one and five, this Ivern two zero and ten are huge damage dealers. Uh, well, the Gwyn's a huge damage dealer, and the Ivern is an amazing enabler for these damage dealers in this top half of the map. We'll see what we find here. Trying to siege this tier two top turret. Baron buff, notably, has fallen off, so that makes sieging a lot harder. We have to watch Spooky in these team fights. He's the one that can really do some major damage. That Cassiopeia ultimate is always one to watch out for. It is uh, changes the tide of these team fights. Yeah, and it, you see how hard it is for RTM to push without the the Baron wave, but Crook has a path in the mid lane and just, oh, it's just taking that inhibitor down. Oh, huge, but the stun finds two. The MF ultimate over the top and the Warnhorn finds a couple. It's just a big cluster as a Cyclone comes out, but it's going the way of RDM. Spooky flashes forward and Drakowski's following down the path of his fellows and an ace comes through for RDM. Not what you want to see for ROTM. Yeah, and that is just off the back of all those team fight ults. Uh, they were a little separated there, weren't in the correct position to be able to stand far enough uh, away from all those engages. And uh, the Cassiopeia ult, the Rel ult, the Wukong ult, the Orn ult coming to fruition there. It was there. a fight. <laughs> yep. A fist fight, but notably uh, the mid lane inhibitor turret, uh, or the inhibitor did go down. Um, granted, if you're looking to apply pressure, the mid lane inhibitor is probably the worst inhibitor to take because you're not able to pull them off to the side. Um, but it's an inhibitor nonetheless. It can cause pressure um, for, you know, a, a dragon, a baron. Um, yeah, it's really only is... helpful when those objectives are up and you're already in the area because that lane will auto shove, um, but it doesn't help you uh, cross map uh, nearly as much. Yep. Baron spawning here in another minute or so. It'll be the next objective to fight over. And Dragon Soul, two minutes away here as well for RTM. So kind of just, I think, waiting for these objectives to come up. I don't think there's a lot to fight over. Um, and RTM, I think, really needs the Baron to be able to push uh, as a team here. But Max getting some good damage down on this tier two. Yeah, and I think uh, Crook's plan right now is to rotate clear vision and make sure that he doesn't get caught um, as the Barons spawn. They're trying to push up, uh, find them in their own jungle, make sure that they're not able to walk in. And that's where that mid lane push helps out a lot, is making sure that they're not able to push through mid and then walk into the river that way. They're forced to go through their own jungle.
Not able to find anything yet, but the hook lands onto Bandy, not the person you want him to land on, but the MF bolt comes down over top as the Orn Horn is sounded, but he's not able to find anything. He's locked up and neither is the Cassiopeia R and Spooky's really low. The flash over the wall from Pope is able to find another one, a double kill as Crooky picks up Lazarus. And that's gonna be a huge team fight win. Almost an ace bandy lives with one HP and that's for sure the end of the game as they have this mid wave. Yeah, that's gonna be the team fight that seals it. RTM able to pick up a win against the only undefeated team in ACL. Um, gotta feel good about that one. Uh, does it help their seeding out for playoffs, but does knock out uh, RMD most likely to that number two spot, I believe. Does depend on the Mirage Alliance result, but uh, a nice confidence boost, if nothing else, uh, to help That's them exactly. as they play tomorrow. That's exactly what I was going to say, a big confidence boost. You go up against an undefeated team in this league, and you come away with a 2-0, not even taking it to three games. Uh, that's huge for ROTM. Like you said, it doesn't help their standing, uh, but I feel like that was great uh, communication there, uh, especially what they were doing around the side lanes at the end. Um, and, uh, you know, all those practice around posturing around those objectives. Um, it's great to get a, a, a lot of, you know, in-game non-scrim experience with that uh, to see how you and your teammates react to those stressful uh, but important situations, but a great 2-0 win for ROTM. Yeah, a nice pickup, nice confidence boost. And if you liked what you saw tonight, RTM's gonna be on the Rally Cry 2 stream tomorrow, facing off against number one seed, Mirage Alliance, in NACL Open Qualifier, Group A. Uh, that'll be the first game. We'll play potentially the next three Saturdays, um, depending on how the results shimmy out. So. I know the boys are excited to face off against Mirage in a preview of what we might see in the ACL playoffs as well. Uh, again, we'll be on stream at uh, 12 Central, 1 Eastern against Mirage on Rally Cry 2. Check us out there tomorrow. Yep, and that sounds like a plan. I'll be sure to watch it. Uh, again, this is Kyler Gish, and I was joined by Lane. A great 2-0 victory here uh, on the day for Return of the Middle Sticks. Um, you said tomorrow, right? Yep. Everybody's going to tune in? Yes. All right, tomorrow is where we're going to find you guys, uh, and that'll do it for us, I believe, from the Return of the Middle Sticks uh, stream here. Um, any last words, Lane? Just thanks so much for casting with me. appreciate it. Uh, always a fun cast with you, and yeah. Uh, excited to see what the boys can do tomorrow. We'll see you go all then. Uh, make sure to tune in. Bye. Bye.